25 years ago, at this same time every evening, I was 1,500 feet underground in a mine in the middle of Australia. Merv, my workmate and I, had moments ago finished drilling 50 holes into a tunnel face 12 feet high and 12 feet wide. We filled the holes with explosives, we had packed up our tools, and we were heading back down the tunnel. We had to get to the end of the tunnel to the intersection where we knew in moments a Land Rover would come to pick us up and whisk us away to the lunch and safety room two miles away. We were in the middle of the Australian outback in the Mount Isa mine. Mount Isa was then the largest underground copper and lead zinc silver mine in the world. 200 miles of roads, 600 vehicles, and 1,000 men underground at any moment in time. We were moving back down the tunnel in urgent but measured steps because we knew that by the top of the hour, we had to be back in the lunch and safety room because at the top of the hour, the shift boss, the shift foreman, was going to push the button and explode all the dynamite that we'd filled our tunnel face with and every other tunnel face across the mine. When we returned after lunch, we discover in the tunnel in front of us 1,400 cubic feet of rock. We'd spend the rest of the shift, three more hours, mucking out that rock, taking it to the end of the tunnel, dropping it down a hole where it would be winched to the surface and it would be processed into lead and zinc and silver. It's not important that I was in the mine 25 years ago. What is important is that I am deeply, deeply grateful for that opportunity and that mining experience and a whole bunch of similar experiences to that one because those experiences shaped who I am today. And more than that, those experiences are at the root of my happiness. The quest for happiness drives so much of what we all do. And happiness, real happiness, is there within the grasp of every one of us. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. The consensus metric says that 10% of us are very happy, 30% of us are happy, and 60% of us are something else. We're not asking for you to raise your hands at this point. What we want to do, what we would like to achieve, is to understand how it's possible for those of us who are outside that small 10% piece of the pie to move into the 10% piece of the pie. How do we, one customer at a time, find true happiness? While we all agree that we do want to be happy, what we won't agree on is what happiness looks like. Some of us, peace. For others of us, it's good health or glory, success, and high achievement. For still others of us, it's the perfect relationship, or it's stuff, a bigger house, a faster car, front row seats to TEDx, and also to Justin Bieber. And just as there are many definitions, many ways to think about happiness, there are many ways to get there. Historically, it's been all about positive attitude. And then it was goals and goal setting, and who amongst us hasn't thought about mindfulness and meditation? And not a month goes by, not a month goes by for any one of us, I'm sure, when we don't hear about one more diet to happiness. More carbs, fewer carbs, more kale, less kale. I'm still waiting for the diet that never, ever mentions kale. <laughs> These are all well and good. But these are the mechanics of this thing called happiness. These are the skin and muscle of happiness. What we're here to talk about tonight is what's at the very heart of that happy person that we all aspire to be. And I say to you, what's at the heart of happiness is three things. And the first of these is gratitude. Being grateful for the people and events that have made it, possi made it possible for us to be where we are today. 
the good things that have happened to us and the good people we've met, as well as the less good people and the less good events from whom we've learned good lessons. My son had a football coach. I think his entire motivation manifesto was seven words. Is that the best you can do? From him, I learned an enormous amount about how not to lead, coach, inspire children and adults. 20 years ago, I worked here in Portland with a rising star in the world of finance. He was generous, intelligent, smart, and thoughtful. From him, I learned more about self-motivation and inspiration than I had in my entire previous work life. And of course, I'll always be grateful to Jimmy Buffett, <laughs> who reminds me constantly, it's always five o'clock somewhere. The essence of elevating our past is to see that the good fortune we have today has come about as a result of the good men and women in our lives. There are seven good men and women who've changed my life. There was an undergrad professor back in Melbourne who helped me when I could barely help myself. My wife, Cindy, makes my life immeasurably better every day of my life. I have a great friend at work who started a year before me, before me whose sage advice and direction has changed my life. And there are four others. Every one of us here tonight has people like that in their lives. Isaac Newton talked of us standing on the shoulders of giants. That's exactly how I feel. I am where I am. I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm living the life I'm living, both by the grace of God and thanks to the selflessness and generosity of these seven men and women. Who are your seven? I cannot emphasize too strongly the incredible power of knowing who these people are and understanding the role that they've played in your life. The sense I have of being part of a team, of being on a team with people who are in it with me is extraordinarily empowering and uplifting. There's a very cool website called 365grateful.com. It was started about four years ago by an Australian woman who was searching, searching for her place, searching for her future, and yes, searching for her happiness. She committed to journaling one minute a day, every day of the year, about some people or some event that she was grateful for. It took her only a couple of months before she realized that she was surrounded by many, many good men and women, and she was enjoying many, many very cool events that made her life immeasurably better than what it was. This simple, straightforward step of making a list of the people and events for which, for which and for whom you're grateful is enormously powerful. That's the past. What about today? If the question is, what's the one thing I need to do or be if I want to be happy and successful, the answer is, of course, it depends. On the wild side of the internet, there are countless stories like, do this one thing on your road to the top, or what every successful woman does before breakfast. In the mainstream of this literature, that asks the question, what's the one thing I need to do or be if I want to be happy? The answer is much simpler. The answer is live with grit. Angela Duckworth and her team have led, led the research and thinking on the power of grit as that one defining characteristic that happy and successful men and women have in common. What the heck is grit? <laughs> grit is passion with perseverance. I love the idea 
of passion with perseverance. It speaks to the importance, the incredible importance, of doing stuff that makes your heart beat fast, that makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up, that makes your eyes shine. I deeply, deeply want to live my life in that world with people who make me feel that way all the time. So we know what this characteristic is, it's grit. We know what it looks like, it's passion with perseverance. And we know how it makes us feel, heart beating, hair prickling and eyes shining. The million dollar question is, how the heck do I find this in my life? I have a great friend who wanted to make the 1988 Olympic rowing team here in the United States. She was fairly inexperienced and relatively undersized. She started putting post-its, notes, around her house and her car and her locker and her gym bag. And these notes all said the same thing. Try, try again, try harder, try a different way, try a different angle, try, try and try again. That's grit. I have another friend who wanted to ride her bike from the west coast of America to the east coast of America. She found a group of like-minded individuals. She trained sporadically for six months. And then on July the 1st, she and her teammates set out from San Francisco. 62 days later, they pedaled into New York City. 3,500 miles on a bike seat six inches long and two and a half inches wide. That's my idea of grit. <laughs> when I wanted to leave the world of mining in the outback, I had to take simple steps. I had to find a school that I could go to, I had to work out how to get into the school, and then I had to work out how I was going to pay for it. None of it was complicated. Most of us here in the room have done something like that, or to be fair, something quite a bit more complicated. Have a goal, take charge, move forward. That's perseverance. And when that goal that you're moving toward is a goal that makes your heart beat fast and make your hair prickle and make, the eye, make your eyes shine, then that's this magical thing called grit. So, be grateful for our past. Live today with grit. What about tomorrow? Stanford professor Carol Dweck and her team have researched the defining characteristics of successful men and women. And their conclusion is, there are two groups of people in the world. Those who believe who they will be today is the same as who they'll be tomorrow. And those who believe their tomorrow is very different from who, from who they are today. That is, those people who have a fixed mindset, I am who I am, and those who have a growth mindset, my future is limited only by my imagination. Merrillhurst University, the home of today's TEDx, has developed a national reputation for embracing students who are developing a second career. These students are in the center of Professor Dweck's second group. Merrillhurst University's bumper sticker logo used to be U period unlimited. I think somewhere tonight, Professor Dweck is quietly smiling. In some ways, all of us here tonight are probably part of Pre Pre Professor Dweck's second group. We're here, we're on a journey, a journey of growth and enlightenment in joy. Our future is whatever we decide it will be. That's a growth mindset. So, what are our three takeaways from tonight? Number one, 15 minutes ago, we started talking about my working in the outback. Every one of us here has a similar stories or stories in some part of our lives whether it's in our, per our work life or our personal lives 
or some other part of our lives. There is enormous power in reveling in who we are, where we are, how we got here, and who are the people and events that helped us get here. Living with gratitude is the foundation for our future. Number two, grit. Start down the path of living with grit today. You don't have to be chasing Olympic glory or riding your bike across America. Start a plan that you've put to one side. Resubmit an application that didn't work. Create a courageous plan for the future. Do one thing that takes effort and focus, that takes grit, but do one thing that makes your heart beat fast and makes your hair prickle and makes your eyes shine. That's living with grit. And growth? We can truly become the best possible us if we believe that we can define our future. That's the growth mindset. So going forward from today, believe that you can be happy. Believe that you can be part of this 10% of the world that are very happy. Resolve that going forward from today, you'll be enormously grateful for the people and events that have made it possible to be where you are today. You will live with grit. You will do one difficult thing every day and you will look to the future with a growth mindset. Gratitude, grit, and growth. That's who we are. Thank you.